The Samsung Galaxy S8 has been a very hot topic since its release. It is true that many people are impressed with what Samsung brought to the table this time around, returning with a complete redesign of their flagship. But is it really as good as they say? Well, I'll spoil the conclusion and say that it is an incredible device, but one that is pretty niche in my opinion. Introducing the most trending topic in the smartphone world, the Samsung Galaxy S8. Let's begin. The exterior design consists of glass from the front to the back, with aluminum around the corners. This is a very easy phone to grip and does not feel slippery at all, which is surprising from such a smooth construction. I'm honestly impressed. The front consists of a 5.8-inch 2960x1440 OLED display and the 8-megapixel front-facing camera that supports a resolution of up to 1440p at 30 frames per second. On the back, there's a heart sensor and flash, the 12-megapixel rear-facing camera that supports a resolution of up to 4K at 30 frames per second and support for HDR, along with the controversial fingerprint scanner. More on that later. On the right, there's a sleep-wake button, where on the left, we have the volume rocker and the Bixby button. On the bottom, you'll find a speaker grill, USB Type-C connector, and an audio jack. On the top, we have a SIM and SD card expansion slot, allowing you to put up to 256 gigs of storage additionally. Very handy. The display is definitely a good selling point, coming at 2960 by 1440 with less saturation, at least out of the box, from past Samsung devices. Content consumption is a very enjoyable experience, despite the letterboxing that you'll find around the corners, but it still blends in with the top and bottom bezels, so it's not a problem. Hell, even the home screen looks gorgeous because of the combination of such a high-resolution panel and a new look to touch was. This phone has an IP68 rating, so it has a very strong resistance to water and dust. You can expect to have no issues going as far as going swimming with it. It being water-resistant gives it more versatility in the sense that it can be used in more places and under more wet circumstances. As for the camera, we've got a strong one. Well, two strong cameras for that matter. Impress isn't what I would describe my reaction to its performance, but satisfaction is more like it. The front-facing camera was pretty good. It gives a pretty soft image, but very vibrant colors. I personally do prefer a saturated look to my images, and this phone delivers. The rear-facing 12-megapixel camera performs nicely. Video looks very sharp, and because of the wide-angle capabilities of this lens, I can capture more from an image without having to make more distance between myself and the subject. This is of course when compared to something like my daily driver iPhone SE, which anecdotally is a nice change. The speakers are still not very good, they lack bass and are rather quiet. Listen. This device features the Snapdragon 835, which is an octa-core processor, an Adreno 540 GPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. Again, with micro C expansion to up to 256 gigs additionally. In terms of gaming, this phone performed very well. I fired up Mortal Kombat X and without any stuttering, the Galaxy S8 crushed this game. Performance is very solid with smooth animations. The Galaxy S8 performed very well on Geekbench. After a few minutes of wait, it scored 1854 in single core performance and 6207 in multi core performance. So, in terms of usability, I'm actually very impressed. The Galaxy S7 Edge was a very slippery phone for me. And with this generation, Samsung managed to make a very holdable phone. In fact, one that is truly comfortable to use without a case. The phone itself performs very quickly regardless of what I do, whether I'm browsing the web, watching videos, or gaming on it. It genuinely feels different than using past Galaxy devices in terms of software. Every year, TouchWiz seems to get cleaner and easier to run on their phones, making it a strong performer for me. There are some things that give the Galaxy S8 an edge <laughs> in the smartphone market. Wireless charging is still a thing with this model. Fast charging has been implemented, greatly decreasing the amount of time that it takes to charge. Edge panels are convenient to have and just easier to use than searching for an app around the home screen, as it gives you easy shortcuts that can be reached just around the corner. The implementation of virus scanning is also pretty cool, and can help with overcoming the popular to hate inconvenience of the positioning of the fingerprint scanner. Complaints still exist with the Galaxy S8 though. The speaker is still pretty bad, though I don't really see Samsung fixing this for a while. The fingerprint scanner is in an odd position, it is harder to reach and sometimes, though not often, 
I end up touching the camera lens instead. If they were to put the fingerprint scanner here, then it should have at least had better coding on it to make it easier to distinguish. Bixby is something that will improve over time, but right now it's just not worth using. Ignore it if you can. Speaking of which, the dedicated button should be programmable. Accidentally launching Bixby is still a problem considering the position of the button. It's just too easy to hit. With these complaints aside, I think it's fair to touch on both the S8 and S8 Plus. I spent a good amount of time with both, and impressively, the Galaxy S8 Plus still feels really nice and comfortable to hold and use despite the size of my hands. They're very small. The fingerprint scanner is slightly harder to reach on the S8 Plus, but not so different from the S8. In terms of performance, they both feel the same. The only thing that made a difference to me was the screen real estate. Though both screens are very roomy, nonetheless, if you have small hands, this phone is still going to be easy to use. Despite its mostly glass design, it is much more comfortable to hold than the iPhone 7 or even the iPhone 7 Plus, with the aluminum from the iPhone being very slippery. So finally, we've reached the conclusion. Since 2015, when Samsung released their Galaxy S6 and struck the world with their edge displays, it was clear that they had an advantage in the mobile environment. Though it came at the cost of microSD expansion and water resistance, these were brought back with the Galaxy S7 and were glorified for it. But with this redesign and huge leap forward, the Galaxy S8 has been set as a benchmark for what phones should be in 2017. TouchWiz has improved greatly and has become a cleaner OS. And personally, I think Samsung pulled off what they were going for here. The most beautiful design of early 2017. But that's of course until we see what some competitors will bring to the table soon. But quite frankly, this device is not for everyone. A better all-rounder as to the uploading of this video is the LG G6, and even the OnePlus 5 that was released just a few days ago, with their more traditional design and still stand out to me as great performers and efficient devices altogether. And some people will just want to stick with a device that has a more traditional look, and I totally get that. I don't think everyone feels ready to deal with a curved display and have a more personal attachment to the designs of yesteryear, and that is what could even make these other devices a better buy for some people. But if you wanted to still give this device a try, then I believe it's worth a look at the very least. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and to stay updated when a new video comes out, make sure to click on that bell and enable notifications. For links to everything featured in this video, and for some suggestions for what to watch next, expect to find those in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy!